back. And divide. Okay, here. Okay, my friends, we're live and we're also recording today's episode. Very special episode. I'm trying some new dark tone colors. You may or may not care about that, <laughs> but uh, we're going to be talking about even like the film industry. So that's why I wanted to do something different for this episode. But before we do that, I have very special friends right here. One of them being my wife. And here's a question for you all. Is it better to have a wife or to have a friend <laughs> in your wife? <laughs> Do you consider me, Emily, more your friend or your husband? Hi, Beto. You always ask the same question. Yeah. I want but you now as in my English. It's both because I don't have relation, uh, intimate relationship with my friend. Thank God, please. But I can do that with my husband. So okay. I want both. Yeah. And both are pretty important. Mm. Oh, very, 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 very important. Okay, Asia, what do you think? Is it um? And we have a special guest, Asia. No. We'll tell you more about <laughs> Asia. But uh, Asia, what do you think you would expect more from from your future husband? For him to be, you know, your husband, or for him to be kind of like best friend? Um, I think both, because I think if you have your husband, you, you like that should be your best friend, right? So, yeah, I think both. Is that? Is that a good answer? <laughs> I don't know. That's what do you guys think? How about you, Beto? How about okay. you, Beto? I'm I'm with friend. I love friendship, and I think to me that's a really high value for mm -hmm. myself. And so yeah, when I think of spouse, like I see you more as my friend. Like that's more my goal. That we are really, you know, intimate friends, <laughs> special <laughs> friends, maybe even. But uh, yeah, I like that. So. I don't know. Just friendship is a really high value for me. Mm -hmm. And I see it in Jesus when he said, I will no longer call you servants, but I will call you friends. Mm. Wow. So I love that, even though yeah. some other you know, theologians have said yes, but after Jesus resurrected, he never called them friends. He called them, you know, disciples and this and that. So I'm like, I don't know if I buy it, but <laughs> 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 I like the idea of friendship. That's a really high value. So... Today we have a special guest, Aisha. Welcome to the show. Welcome Hello to the guys. studio. Thank you for having me. I'm yes. so blessed. How are you feeling today? I'm. This is a divine appointment right now, to be honest. We were not expecting this. And I was so, I was just here for like a meeting for an hour. And then we just got into a really good conversation to the point where now we're like, let's do a podcast. So I'm so, I feel really blessed. And you guys are just amazing in general, honestly. You guys really inspire me to just continue to be more creative. And I could go on and on. But anyways, I feel good. So I feel good. good. <laughs> awesome. Well, we're glad you're here. Mm -hmm. Okay, Mili. So, I mean, we're going to go into um, Asia's story. But before we do that, like you, you said, I mean, we were here and you said, let's record a podcast. But that was all because we have a studio for rent here, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. We're renting this studio here in Costa Mesa. Some people, you know, sometimes travel. And when they're in Orange County, they rent the studio to record their episodes or sometimes there are podcasters who are based out of Orange County and they come and rent and they have, you know, we've had MMA fighters, NFL players, we have, you know, musicians, whatnot, all kinds of people. But all that to say, you know, we, we met you kind of like with that, that um, background that we have the studio, we're renting it. You kind of wanted to check it out and see if you wanted yeah. to record a podcast. But as we got to know you a little bit, Millie's like, we need to do a podcast with you right now. So... I have a few ideas in mind for you know how I want to what I want to learn about your story, mm -hmm. but I think this originated in Millie first. So I want you to kind of like say what what is the first thing you would love to know about Asia, Millie? Well, we were talking already like uh, almost for more than an hour, and I'm just I feel like I know you forever. Yeah. You know that's. Uh, beautiful feeling mm -hmm. and I just want to be um, a good servant yeah I just want to lift you up I notice your talents I can see your heart through your eyes so for me it's uh, and when you were telling me your a little bit your story where you've been this couple months ago and telling us your testimony I was like a oh God Jesus you're talking to me right yes, now yes. you know and that's that's why I thought 
you know what? This can, this can be so helpful to for uh, people who follow us or who listen to us. Um, we all have a story to tell, and yours was fascinated. Mm -hmm. But why you don't tell us a little about a little bit about your background? I think that it's important, Beto, because he's been like all around the world, living different cultures. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And that wiring is good to know for what God is going to do in your life. Mm -hmm. You know, okay. yeah. uh, where we at here in um, U.S. Costa Mesa, California, uh, it's multicultural. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. and uh, all the cultures have something. Oh, they have so much to share. Mm -hmm. So why you don't tell us a little bit? So because I think Beto was doing the cameras and he didn't listen. But um, that's nice. That's yeah. nice to yeah. hear. You no, know, I, the, thought, the hard I work. thought she's she's like Mexican or something like that. She looks like a little bit <laughs> Latina. Lizardo, Lizardo sounds yeah, to me sounds yeah, like yeah, you know, Latin yeah, yeah. American. Last name, but I think I overheard like it's like Philippines yeah, or something Philippine. like that, right? So, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so that's that's yeah. awesome. So, why don't you tell us about that? Okay, so my name's Asia, and I grew up in well, I was born in the Philippines, um, and we lived there for about a couple of years, and then my family and I actually had to move to Saudi Arabia for my dad's work um he's an aircraft mechanic so he would have to like travel from time to time so we moved to saudi arabia for a couple of years that was a wild you know intense situation i guess because you know I, it was back during the oil war and oh, i sound wow. like i sound like a grandma when i yeah. say that like back in the oil war <laughs> <You're so junk. laughs> yeah. back in the oil war um but yeah we ended up uh, living there and I just that was actually one of my first few memories as a honestly a baby there just you know petting camels like you know the baboons around us you know so awesome. eating the rice the yellow rice I think it was so good um and then we obviously we had to like leave and uh we ended up moving to Canada and we kind of stayed in Canada for 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 a while now and then um I, w I lived in Vancouver from maybe the age of like five to 15 years old. And then I then moved to Montreal for eight years. And then after that, I moved to just to pursue acting to really take it seriously. Because um, I guess because now we're, we are talking a little bit more about the film industry. I kind of I grew up doing um, theater, musical theater. And that was I just. I guess it it kind of runs in the family. A lot of my aunts and uncles, they're all entertainers. So uh, from the Philippines. So oh, wow. yeah, a lot of them are actors and, you know, singers and DJs and stuff, which is nice. And my dad's side is more on like the political side of things. Oh, wow. So yeah, it's really, really cool. exciting. So I guess it just, it, it's, it just, we have that, I guess, passion to entertain. But um, so I really, so my mom, she, she took me to like a bunch of dance classes and acting classes, you know, as a kid, uh, I would do like ballet, hip hop, all that stuff. But then I really found my passion when we were, when I was performing musical theater um, growing up. And, um, I, and I did that for about, honestly, all my life after, you know, um, how do I say this? Yeah, since like high school and then and then it moved to college and I tried to do something a little bit more realistic. You know, I was like, OK, well, you know, I can't I can't be playing, you know, playing characters all the time or whatever. Like I have to try something else. So I tried cooking. I tried, you know, like being in politics. I tried, um, you know, it feels unreal to yeah. to be an actor. Per, like, to be honest, like my family always wanted me to have like a, a secure job, you know, like mm. especially in the in the Philippines, it's very like, OK, let's be a nurse, you know, like let's go into, you know, it's just super, super typical in a sense. But I just always had that like um, I, I tried to when I was in college, um, I tried to do, you know, uh, arts and communications for some reason. But then I ended up I, it was funny because I remember I was doing one of the um, one of the I had an extracurricular activity that I get to choose. And one of them was theater in college. And I was like, you know, what? I could do that. It's like an easy class. Like it's been a minute. And then I remember I just once I went into the class, I 
I fell in love and I switched my whole major from communications to theater. And my parents were like, why? Wow. And I was just like, I was like, I'm sorry, I can't help it. I can't run from this. So it was, it was good. It was a, it was a journey. And then I decided to really take acting more seriously after college. Um, actually, after college, I did a little bit of university in Montreal, which was uh, in Concordia. And I did, um, what did I do? I did political science. So I did political science. I majored in it. I failed the first semester. I mm. hated it. It was, wow. it was, I only, I only aced like one class, which was philosophy of politics, which was really genuinely like I actually found interesting, but the rest, it was just like a headache. And I, I realized I only like <laughs> politics wow, to a certain crazy. extent. Yeah. And then I failed that, that whole semester. Like they literally, I think I got kicked out and wow. I, I cried to my mom because I, that day I went to school thinking for some reason that I had um, classes, but then I didn't realize through the summer that they emailed me saying, oh, you have to, you have to, um, I guess, answer some emails to make sure that you're actually coming to class. But I, I guess I, I missed the emails. Anyways, it was just like one of those like really like stupid moments. Did that they I had. say, did they say something like, you're never going to be a politician. Yeah. And you're like, no, I don't know if that's good or bad. Jeez. Yeah, honestly, blessing in disguise. Um, but I ended up, I remember going into all these classes because I technically was scheduled, but I didn't realize that they had to like cancel, you know, my, my classes because I didn't answer those emails. So it was weird. And then I remember going into... It's like, I can't believe that this happened. Yeah. Like just... I went into all those classes. Because I didn't reply to the yeah. text message. Wow. I, I went into all those classes thinking, you know, and I had all my friends, like we were, <gasps> we were, I was so excited, you know, and then, and then I remember like, uh, we were going to go buy books at the, um, at the library but then i was like opening up my my you know my account for concordia and and i got nothing there was like no books that I, I was assigned to me so then i went to my teacher or the print or you know the office and i was like hey like i'm not assigned to any of the books i don't understand what's going on and they're like you're not you're not enrolled for the semester i was like oh, what oh so could you imagine my i was like that's crazy. so shocked and i genuinely was like i i dropped like my heart dropped because i was like i need to do school like this is like you know like mm -hmm. education at the end of the day so i remember like crying in my car and i was like calling my mom i was like mom like i like i I got kicked out. I think I, I think my, you know, it was so low that I, I got kicked out, like my GPA or something. And the, I, I think I missed a couple of like the emails and she was just like, well, what are you going to do? And then I was just like, honestly, mom, like it was kind of a blessing in disguise because, you know, I really want to like focus on acting, like really just like go 110% in it. So she was in California at this time. She was already working in California and I always wanted to live in California, like since I was like 14, 13. Why? Uh, just I don't know. I just always the the beach, all those the palm like trees the palm trees. <laughs> it was so for you know like I I guess I I don't know what it was, but I just genuinely felt like a calling. You to think go there. did you did you grow up like knowing about like Hollywood and you know, the Hollywood sign and I think you so. knew it was in California yeah. or something like that? And I don't know. Honestly, growing up too, like I definitely like looking back now, especially you know reflecting a lot i definitely romanticized this place back then like you know because now i can feel like okay if i if i have to move i really don't mind but i always had that like dream at that time i was around i think i was 18 19 i was like i want to go to california all that stuff and then or 17 i don't remember but anyways it was in my you know late teens i guess and my home's like okay fine like go 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 here and really take acting seriously. And I was debating if I would do uh, film acting in in California or um, or theater in Toronto, um, like either or. But I was, um, yeah, I think I, I was, I have so much respect for theater, for theater actors too, just because it's so hard. Um, you know, it's like you live, breathe, eat theater, um, you know, and, and just being on stage constantly, just rehearsing all that stuff. It's, it's a lot of work and stuff. I did, I did theater too, a couple for, you know, before even film, but anyway, so I moved to California and I really took acting very seriously then. Like I did, I trained, um, in a lot of like studios. Um, I did a lot of like audition work. I did um, Meisner, all that stuff. It was it was a lot of just techniques that I was, 
I was doing and um, and then finally I got signed with management there, but then they found out I was Canadian. So Ooh. they were like, oh, well, we can't really put you in any of these, you know, like any auditions because you're not going to get a good pay and it just doesn't really make sense. You have to go back to Canada. So I was like, oh. So I moved back to Vancouver and that's when I really, you know, like I was looking for agencies there. So then I got signed with um, a film and TV agent, excuse me, a film and TV agent. And uh, and then that's when we booked our first show. It was on Netflix. It was uh, it was my first first um, one liner show ever, like one liner um, role. And um it was good. It was uh, the Babysitter's Club on Netflix, episode seven. And <laughs> <laughs> and it, it was nice. I had to like play the mean girl or whatever. It was good. I just, I was crying. It was funny because um, I remember I was like, so I really wanted um, to just, uh, it was, it was at that time I, I was actually coming to know who God was too. I was also going through it um, in my uh, like living in LA, the LA lifestyle was very, um, you know, when I was doing acting there, I was also obviously living in LA at the time in Orange County. And I would, I would go out a lot and I would just, I felt like I was losing my purpose over there, you know, like networking became partying, all that stuff. And, um, and then, yeah, I think it was a very big calling for me to have to move, move back to Canada, just to, to calm down and just to, you know, be more, uh, just slow, I guess, like just slow and steady and steadfast, I guess you could say. So then um, finally, I, I actually went to a church. Uh, I went to a church. Uh, Had you a, grown up uh, like knowing about the faith or Christ I, or stuff like that? Up, or? I grew up Catholic. Oh, okay. So um, I grew up. Just like in Mexico. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I grew, up, I grew up Catholic. Hey, it's good background. Okay. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah. But I'm saying how similar it is. My, you know, my Philippines. Is Catholic. Yeah, and, same. And, you know, yeah. And I have a huge respect. And, and the last and names are similar. Like in the Philippines and in oh, Mexico. Yeah, 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 right? yeah exactly. So I think we have a lot in common. We do. Because <laughs> I think away. Spain invaded the Philippines, right? Uh -huh. I think the that's Spaniards. what happened. The Spaniards. The Spaniards, yeah. So, um, <clears throat> so yeah, I grew up Catholic, but I never really put God in the center of my life. Mm. I never really put God in the center of my life. And um, I was told to go to a, a Christian church from a friend of mine. And so I was like, okay, yeah, I'll go. And I went by myself um, to this random church that I googled and it was i cried the first the f like right when i sat down by myself in the sermon worship was so beautiful and i've never experienced a church like that before because mm -hmm. i you know you know catholic churches they're very different obviously mm -hmm. um so that was in la in los yeah, angeles that was no that was in vancouver i lived in oh, vancouver okay, at that okay. point so i moved back because my mom's like you need to go back like you're losing your purpose here you're supposed okay. to be focusing on acting yet you like mm. i was but then at the same time i wasn't in a sense too I much party too much partying <laughs> too much this too much festivals all that stuff so she was like you need to move back and plus the, the the management was telling me like you you just have to move back for you know it just made more sense and what made you go to the the church like for the first time like do this different I was just type of church well to be honest like i i just felt very um so what happened was like um a friend of mine kept telling telling me to about god and i just was like okay like why you know i, I was like why and I was going through it. I think a lot of my friends and I, we were, we were all going through it. Uh, you know, we, we were kind of lost. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, um, one of them actually, um, found, uh, like found Jesus, um, in our friend group. And then, you know, they were like, like, you should check out a church on, you know, there. And I was like, okay, sounds good. So I, I went and, um, I was just so, I was genuinely like, like, blown away from the sermon i think they were talking about the four storms and uh in life that we go through and why jesus died for us and how you know we have to like jesus is our rock in a sense and i just thought wow uh it was i was crying and i remember like i was so into i was like i started really asking who who jesus is hmm. you know like i i knew about jesus but i never really understand i never really understood why he really died for us and you know like i like yeah like why like on a deeper level so then i ended up um 
So I ended up actually going to church by myself, like frequently at that point. And then I started kind of being a more part of the community. And then I started having to cut people off because I realized, oh, they're not really good influences on me. Or I had to, there was a point I was so strict with my routine that every morning I would read the Bible and I would only talk to maybe a few people before 1 p.m. And then by 1 p.m. I can like, you know, really just talk to everybody and stuff. But the people who are really, really faith based, like I only had a few friends that were super, super like faith based in that moment. I was only able to like, if I really wanted to like socialize, I'll talk to them type of thing. So I was like, don't talk to anyone after like 1 p.m. or something like that. And, you know, so I would just like meditate in the morning with the Bible, you know, pray, have my coffee, go, go, go for a, a spiritual like walk. And I was really, I felt like I was really talking to God. I was really, the Holy Spirit was connecting, really connecting with me. And it was so so it was such a beautiful, you know, first few months that God has shown me who he was. And at that point, I decided to, um, yeah, I really started changing my lifestyle around because when I moved from L.A. to Vancouver, I remember the first few weekends, I was super, super anxious if I wasn't going out. I was mm. like, I was like, why is why is everyone not going out? Like, I don't understand. And it's like, oh, it's raining, you know, like it's like I'm just staying home. And I was like, so what if it's raining? You know what I mean? Hmm. Like, I was just like I was just in that crazy state of mind. Like, we always have to go out every week. Doing, just, doing, doing. Yeah. Doing. And, yeah. Or like I always had to distract myself, like when when it comes to like work or when it comes to, you know, friends or socialize and all that stuff. It was just too much and I realized like I needed to work in stillness at that point so um so finally when I got my mental health more straightened out in a sense I decided to uh focus more on like my acting again and then um I remember like just praying I was like god if this is like if this is in your will I don't know why you put this like passion in me to continue to do acting like I just don't understand why because honestly it is really hard the film industry is very very hard like you're getting 99.9 rejected a lot when it comes to auditions and that's you know there are times where I've cried in audi like you know not getting the audition I can't imagine mm -hmm. I don't want to show up there it's, it's because hard. I always want to belong and be part <clears> of <throat> it and the, the rejection is tough for me yeah wow. yeah okay here's here's a, just need to be a, so a weird weird question on my cell phone i don't know why like whatever like a year ago or two years ago i get random texts that say bet we want you to audition for blah 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 <laughs> can you make an audition i'm like what and now because no, i guess nobody was responding to these things now i get the the same text but now it says it's for you know stranger things or it's oh, for and it, it says which oh show my God. And i'm like She's well, a I don't scammer. Know. it sounds yeah. like a scam is it, it, does that happen prob yeah, is that, yeah, yeah, it, yeah, is sure. it probably a scam i wouldn't <laughs> i wouldn't trust it especially on the internet i just i think it's Yeah, I've gotten scammed too, especially when you're like an aspiring actress, like in the, you yeah, know, like I- Like we have this role in, in what taken, happens. I've literally taken, there was one point where I remember I was like in LA and I, especially in the city, like everyone wants to be like an actor here. So um, at that point, like, well, I know just like a lot of people in general, right? So they go to LA and they're like, oh, you know, like this is it, this is our start mm -hmm. and stuff. Um, I've I've definitely gotten scammed when I think there was one class that was way too overpriced, way too mm -hmm. overpriced. And um, it was yeah, it, it wasn't good. It was like the the techniques that they were teaching there was very like you felt like you were in grade 10 or like grade nine, like doing all these like weird like. I don't know. Just, I just was not progressing. And they were saying, oh, like the an agent's going to come see you or something like that. So you guys have to be prepared for the next few months in our classes. And little did we know, like the agents barely, you know, did anything for for that class. And wow. it was just one of those like money hungry. Yeah, yeah, I was like now, like I if I, I, I tell all my friends who are pursuing acting or any of that stuff, like be careful with those because it, it, it's really it's real out there. Like they genuinely like so many people try to scam, especially like a actors who are like desperate to want to like start mm. off their kickstart their career and stuff. But that's just like, you know the the beauty of the industry wow. it's it's crazy because we have a scam scams for 
every everything. industry yeah everything. yeah they figured out a way to <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> every in in the the crazy thing that uh, some statistics show up the women are doing that mm -hmm. because are behind the scenes mm -hmm. you know we always think that it's oh, really? men like men's doing that you know who's gonna rob a bank no, it's, it's not a, gonna it's be a, a woman. woman. Mm -hmm. It's not gonna be a woman. Yeah. But now, because they you don't see them and they're on computers on now it's women. Yeah. It's women doing that. Yeah. Oh boy. Yeah. Crazy. There's camps wow. for everything. Beware. Yeah. Okay. Crazy story. So you go to this church. Uh, you you um, start following Jesus. Start reading the Bible. Hmm. Uh, you said this this work was kind of interesting because you. You almost, well, you use the word, it helped me with my mental health, health yeah. right? So are you saying like Jesus, he like heals your mind, heals? He does. Like, he he, I, I, I feel like Jesus definitely made me more self-aware because before I found him, I <clears> genuinely felt like I was very obviously in my flesh, but I was also like at this stage in my life, like I had that revelation where I I felt like I was, I woke up every morning in the world and I was just getting crashed waves by waves left and right. And it was just so noisy and so distracting until when I really found to know who God was, God is. And I was like, wow, I just, I was taking more accountability with the things that I was doing. If I was hurting people or if I was, you know, I was taking more accountability and more responsibility within myself and just, you know, It was that like spiritual maturity that I was like really craving and that I really wanted. And um, and just like that self-development and that self-work that I, I was like, wow, like, okay, there's just so much more. And, and then I started also my biggest revelation was like, it's not about me. It's not mm. about me. It's about mm. other people. It's to be of service to other people. And that was just such a freeing thing to have. Mm. And it just changes your whole perspective in life and the way you love people and mm. the way you are with people. And yeah, honestly, I, yeah, he really changed my life. I, I started taking alpha courses, um, mm. which were, you know, like courses to under like, they're so good. It's so good. Like to understand who God is. And I was asking all these crazy questions like, wait, why did he die for us? I don't understand. Like what, what about the old Testament, the new Testament, this and that, you know, and it all, it just all interconnects and it's just so cool. And I really found my community there. And that's when I decided to get baptized. And when I got baptized, it was just one of the most beautiful, like I, I did a prayer and fasting before and And after that, and um, honestly, and then I just saw God flourish in my life at that point. And uh, he, I just remembered like after my baptism, I wasn't even concentrating much on like, I was, okay, like I was like, I feel like acting was always in the back of my mind because like it was like a career choice and it's, it's a very like, you know, um, how do I say it? Like, For me, I was just waitressing at that point and I was like doing auditions. So to me at that point, my ego was very like, um, you know, I, I would like die if I didn't do acting type of thing. You know, I was really identifying myself as an actor at that point in my life. Um, but when I was starting to get baptized, I was fully more concentrating on other people and other things. And I just saw it like God working through me and I think, I don't know if it's because like, that's all I had going for me was all these auditions and just like waitressing. And I didn't really have any other, you know, um, I think three days go by and I was doing a lot of like intense praying, um, praying. And I was just in my room for, I think three days straight in the dark. I don't know why, but I was just like praying, praying so heavily to the point where I was crying. And I was like, and then, um, I, I was doing auditions, uh, when I would leave the house and then I would come back home and I'm just like, God, just tell me if this isn't for me, you know, like, that's it. Just give me a sign or something. And then that's when we booked that show. And then it was funny because when we did that show, um, I was like, wow, me and my agent, we were having this momentum, right? But God always comes in to humble you. I mm. think God definitely does that. So, uh, he's an expert. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. He does that in many ways because COVID happened. COVID oh. happened right after we were doing more auditions. And um, so I was like, oh, man, like, so not only the film industry went down, but the whole industry, like the whole, like everyone, the world, the world, oh. the world went <laughs> yeah. down. So everything was like, we were jobless. And um, wow. at the time, um, 
uh, uh, an ex of mine was working at construction. So I was like, okay, well, maybe this would be a good idea. That, that was the only job that was available at that point. So, so I was like, okay, fine. I will, I will, you know, I will go and do construction work. And so I ended up nice. from LA to wow. Canada, now in the boonies somewhere in the middle of nowhere for six months straight, uh, 16 hours a day to well, I think we did a 19 hour shift once and I'm flagging and I'm flagging in the middle of nowhere, um, you know, with a stop sign and all that stuff with like a yellow highlighting suit and to like let, let some yeah. trucks go yeah, by and stuff yeah. like that direct traffic. 20, 24 days on four days off. So it was 24 days straight work, 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 16 to 18 hours a day and then four days off break. And I mean, it, thank God, it, it was definitely, it was good money at the end of the day, but my mental health was just mm. like, psh, wow. you know, mm. like I was- You make me for something better than yeah, this. Yeah, I was right? like, cause wow. I, re wow. I really surrounded, it, it made me want to appreciate what I wanted to do in my life more. Mm. I was like, I cannot wow. see myself doing this for the rest of my life. And what you know- was, What was the construction? What were they doing building? It, we were paving highways. So, oh. and it wasn't like the, uh, it was honest work at the end of the day, but it was more so like the, the people that you surround yourself with, you could just tell like, you know, like this, it was just very, it made me really sad. I, I was kind of like grieving for them because I was just like, I, you know, like to think that this is what they, you know, um, how do I say it? Because I have a, so much respect for construction workers. They do a lot. Um, but my crew personally, I found that, you know, like they, there, there was a lot of like drinking, a lot of like, mm. you know, just very, just this, that. Is, this is it, you know? And, you know, they would spend a lot of money just on drinks. And I'm just like, okay i i don't like i just it pushed me to want to do the things that i love to do so after i finished uh six months of work over there i ended up um i came back i actually gained a lot of weight at that point too i was like it's a wow. lot of work honey. yeah a lot of work a lot <laughs> of that, like that's what happens out. when we work yeah. in construction yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's, i was just like i'm not gonna i'm not gonna you know like have a bad diet i ended up having a very bad diet so then i finally worked at a gym and that's when i you know lost the the weight and then um well as much as i could at that point and then wanted to i, ha I had you know I had a passion for health and fitness too. because I always used to like, you know, um, like I really loved the gym and working out and all that stuff. So I decided, okay, well, you know what, maybe I'll just, you know, focus on that while I, you know, uh, do my acting stuff. Right. So health and you get to do the acting. So everything you can see, I always intercorrelated my acting to my, you know, whatever Everything. it is. It was always in the back of my head. So then um, I remember when I got hired at the gym, like the first week, they were like, well, we don't know how to feel about, you know, like working with an actor or whatever. And I was like, oh, I haven't gotten booked in a really long time. Like, you're good. Like, honestly, I don't even know if I'm going to get booked in a while. Actually, I ended up getting booked at another show the, the week I got hired. So I was like, oh my gosh, this is so crazy because now I'm at this point where I have to like find a balance of working a full-time job there and then and then letting my boss know, hey, just a heads up, I have to, you know, do a show and stuff. So we ended up shooting for like three days in Whistler, which was so cool. And it was such a, again, a small role, which was awesome. I loved, I loved doing like those small roles. It was such a, it was cool. But I had that mentality where I'm like, so wow, like this is so cool. Like you, they get to do all these I get to see the set, you know, for at least a day and, um, you know, being on set and then seeing the cast and the crew just work together and just make a story and just like, you know, it, it's, it's actually such a cool thing, but it sucked uh -huh. because like, I was only there for a day. They get to do this for like six months straight and I get to go back into, you know, like either waitressing or working at a gym or something. So, um, it was, it, you definitely felt very like, um, you know, appreciative in those moments. So then after a while I started working at the gym and I kind of got really, um, how do I say it? Stagnant, just stagnant. Yeah. Stagnant. stagnant. Like, just That's how you say it. In yeah. Spanish. <laughs> in Spanish. Hey, atorado. Oh. oh, really? Or estancado. <laughs> estancado. Yeah. yeah. I got stagnant at the gym. I was like, <laughs> I was working so much and I was, I felt like I was paying, I wasn't even focusing on my acting classes anymore, all that stuff. And I was like, man, like this is, 
this is kind of getting you know where where is this i don't know what was going on mm. i just didn't feel asia please drink your coffee yeah sure <laughs> Beto, we need to share with her um the story of this guy um i don't know the the the, the show we saw you know that he was working for 20 oh, years oh yes 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 mm. yeah okay but, uh, the, <laughs> I, I think my colors are too me. red but uh whatever um why too red beto no i'm are looking you shy? at I'm, are you shy yeah, i'm looking at my colors <laughs> like, yeah, i think it's too red but it's okay uh there's a show called the chosen right because you oh were mentioning yes. it, i love right? the chosen it's you're so mentioning good. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, yeah. i don't know if you were saying it on air or before we started recording but we were watching uh it's called jesus and jonathan mm. so it's the main actor that plays the role of jesus right watch that jo jonathan rumi is jonathan that, yeah. rumi he's, he, him. his um testimony yeah oh, he wow. did, they did a documentary on oh him oh my i was crying and yeah. crying and crying <laughs> that's my life <laughs> i know one day you know, like, he, oh my goodness it's okay he worked so hard mm. for 20 years mm-hmm as after, an actor as right? an actor wow mm -hmm. like he was living like day by day one night he was like i don't have money f to eat Ugh. and pay my rent i feel and that he's <laughs> like do you know what i'm done i give up mm. yeah. i give you everything like i can do this no more i'm done mm. and after he prays at the next day he wake up and go to his mail and he start receiving checks wow so like Oh, and, and he's recording everything. You know, like, look, I know I, I prayed to God yesterday and he answered my prayer and I have this check. And after, hours after I go again and I have another check. So far, I have money to pay my rent and to pay my bills mm -hmm. and food. Wow. But n at the next day, they call me to be part of. Oh, that is no, I think so it was good. a month. A month it took after? a month. That's but so he good. had he had the money for for a month, That's you know, so to good. like survive and all of that. Yeah. And but then within that, that month, uh, uh Dallas, the guy from the Chosen called him and it's like, Hey, I I want to talk to you about a project called the Chosen. Wow. It is it is <laughs> so tough. You know, and it's funny because we have uh, our son Joseph, mm -hmm. he's 14 years old. Mm -hmm. And sometimes You know, I think happened to all of us that we have these huge dreams and you start, you know, working on it and you see that nothing is happening mm -hmm. and kind of you give up. But like, I'm done. This is not working anymore. And you know what? Let's try something else because this is not working. And my son, he stepped on a, on a chair and he's like, mom, dad, don't listen to my mom you know what remember this person who worked so hard and finally did it like never stop working on your dreams yeah right yeah. Mm -hmm. don't listen to you, my mom she don't know what she's <laughs> talking about <laughs> keep working because this is our passion mm -hmm. camera is one of better's passion wow. i'm just the wife <laughs> 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 trying to help And we built all this beautiful studio yeah. and we're working so hard on, well, Beto's working so hard on the podcast and making reels and, and I'm just come with this, what we have, mm -hmm. right? And like, Lord, this is your time. This is your space. This is your life. But we need to eat. Yeah. You know, we need money to survive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How are we going to do it? Yeah. <laughs> um, because this is art you know cameras like what you're doing is art yeah and i can imagine uh your your story you know yeah. your life is tough crazy yeah but uh, always waiting yeah always waiting always in the lord because yeah. how i hear you and i listen to you god have a huge purpose for you thank you you know and have wow. a beautiful because the bible say that our dreams are nothing mm -hmm. compared with god's dreams yes oh wow that was you so know good. and yeah and you were saying that you want to do your own podcast and um you already have three that you record mm -hmm. yeah right 
and you feel like you need to work on this yeah and come with your own you're working on your own project yeah and i hear you being scared like yeah. i'm scared the fear yeah the fear yeah and it's so natural yeah it's so natural but you're gonna find that when you work on it mm -hmm. when you start doing that you know because it's you know it's not acting mm -hmm. but it involves you know a, cameras microphones yeah you know sometimes maybe you can act like you know a little bit <laughs> Just a little cry, so a little they tear. can believe you uh. <laughs> yeah no it's it's so it's honestly like at that point yeah like going back to that because i i want to you know yeah, connect that uh -huh. i want to connect that with what you just said i felt i felt that stagnant um energy uh, that i wasn't doing what i actually wanted to do or what was god's calling for me so then that moment i decided i'm gonna quit my job i'm gonna go back to la and i'm just gonna you know like focus on the podcast mm -hmm. like i've been mm -hmm. wanting to do a podcast since 2019 and i wanted to focus maybe like on my um my sisters they have like a body sculpting for for a business for their health and wellness so i was like okay i could do that to make the money on the side not even on the side just like my main income and all that stuff so i had that um there was this like calling that i had and i also felt a calling to stay at uh to go to the one to one of the churches here in anaheim for some reason i don't know what it was i just kept having these visions of me being in that at the anaheim church so i was like okay okay god i'm gonna give it to you at this point and um when i went there i started that's when i started really just trying to like you know focus on these projects and um at this point the strike happened right the strike there was a film oh, industry the the actors, uh, yeah 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 it was hard it was hard for all of us again another discouraging thing mm. because it was covid and then it was a strike and then at that point i was like man like how how much more trials and tribulations do we have to, as actors you know to go through in a sense and it was i was like you know what i'm gonna take this as an opportunity for me to venture out on some other things and you know like at the end of the day i will always like my heart will always be with acting but i just could you know do do other projects for now i think that would have been you know i felt freeing at that moment i was like mm. you know, it's fine if i have less auditions this month or whatever so then i ended up um you know I, I then met you guys which was awesome and then you know i was i felt like i was having this momentum interviewing people all this stuff and then out of the blue i had a random um audition for a supporting lead role for a film and I'm thinking, okay, we may or may not get this, but I've been finally getting back into my creativity with my acting classes. So I felt very like in, in my, like in my, how do I say element? I felt like I was in my element at this point, like doing the projects that I really love, feeling more secure now, uh, now that I, you know, was like living with my parents and we're, we have a house in Riverside. So I'm not like worried about the bills and all that stuff. And I'm just like, okay, like I can actually be creative and do the things that I want to do. So I did the audition and I was like, I did it with my sister. And I remember thinking... She, she's an actor too? No. She, what do you mean she, she, did just, it? she just read it. She read it for me. I needed oh, okay. someone to read over FaceTime and stuff. So it's a self-tape audition. Oh. So because of the COVID, uh, I was. it's a blessing for a lot of actors because we don't have to, to audition for, locally oh, now. Nice. We oh, can wow. like yes. audition self-tapes. So cool. So, yeah, which is kind of like a blessing in disguise. I, I, I do miss the in-person auditions because there, there's a lot of pros and cons to it but i ended up auditioning and i got my sister to read it and i think because my sister and i read it together it felt very natural because it was it was a girl who, pl who just plays having a, fun yeah just having fun it was like a girl who's super bubbly plays a best friend and i was like this is literally me mm. so then i ended up doing um doing that with her and then next you know i get a call back i'm like whoa i haven't had a call back in so long so i'm like thinking okay where like okay like so i ended up having a callback i prepared for the callback it was all that we i think it was with the producers and the director uh, on a zoom call and i was a little nervous but i was like you know what there's a reason why you know they wanted me here it's like let's just be in my element again so then i did the callback and i didn't hear from them but then maybe i think like a few days go by they're like oh like you're 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 uh you're 
I guess one of the few choices who plays the role of Gabby in this movie. I'm like, oh, that's exciting. So I'm praying on it. My family's praying on it. And if it happens, it happens. I'm at this stage where I'm like, if it's in God's will, it's in God's will. Mm -hmm. I've been praying that I'm like, God, if it's not for me, take it away from me. Mm -hmm. I'm at that point. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, I went through a lot this last six months, especially after a really, really hard breakup. And at that point, I'm just like, God, like whatever is in your will, like, let me just do your will. You know, thank you for this audition. But if it's not for me, take it away. Mm. And I ended up, you know, I was I was having a moment where I'm like, maybe I won't get this, but I'm genuinely OK with it. Like genuinely, I'm actually OK. I'll just continue with whatever. Next thing you know, a few days go by. And I think it was that moment I realized, yeah, I don't think I'm going to get this, but that's OK. And then my agent, she literally texted me. She's like, we got approved. I was like, what? Mm. I was like, what do you mean we got approved? She's like, you got the you got the role. She calls me. I'm like crying. I was like, this is insane. This is one of the biggest like roles I've ever done. It's a supporting lead for a film, for a feature film starring like, you know, very, you know, I guess well-known people. And I was like, this is insane. I cannot believe this is happening. Thank you, Jesus. So I ended up going there and I'm thinking like I had to fly back to Canada, obviously, because that's where we had to, you know, film. So we shot there for like a month or so. And um, it was so, it was such a beautiful, it was one of those like moments where I'm like, this is surreal. Like, you know, I was, you know, we were, we had a beautiful hotel provided for us. Um, you know, there was like drivers, we, they would drive us to being on set on circus. And it was just like, I get to do this for, I don't know how many days, but I don't get to do it just for one day. I get to do it for a while, you know, and I was excited. Wow. Um, and it was great, but it, I felt like my mind was so overly stimulated at that moment because I was like, it was such a go, go. I would wake up super early. We would go on set. We would, um, you know, hair and makeup, go straight on set, like, you know, rehearse blocking all that stuff. You know, it was, it was great overall, but then my mind was overstimulated and we had to do interviews, social media, you know, work, you know, in between takes, and um, it would go on for maybe like 10, 12 hours after. And then I would go home in my hotel and then I'm just like silent. It's silent. And I, I would call my sister, my friends. But then like there were days where they just didn't pick up because, you know, they have their own lives and stuff. Right. But there were, when, when those days happened, I didn't realize how quiet my mind was and how unsettled I was. And in that moment, I was like, why am I so like, this is crazy. I'm like, you know, this is it. This is what, you know, what I've been wanting for so long. I don't mm. understand where this is like, how, like, I don't know if it was like a, um, what is it called? Uh, I forgot what it, my friend, my friend said it. She said you, you had like a, it's like a, it's something to do with mental health, but I, for, I forgot what it was called. Mm. Um, it'll come back to me. And, uh, it, the imposter syndrome or something. Oh. I felt like I had like, maybe it was imposter syndrome. Um, but I was like, no, but I've like, I'm so in my element when I'm in, on set. Like I love being on set. Like I, like I black out and I'm just like in it, you know, I just don't, I don't think it's me feeling, Im but then, um, but then I told her, I was like, I, I am going through like this thing where I feel like I don't deserve it because I'm mm. so used to failing forward. Mm. I'm so used to getting rejected. I'm, I feel like someone else should take my place. You know what I mean? So I, it was weird. Like I genuinely felt like I didn't deserve it at that moment. And I remember I would just cry a lot and I would just like cry in my uh, hotel room. And I was like, why am I feeling this way? And then in that moment, I, I decided to worship and I decided to pray because I think I was so wow. distracted throughout those, you know, throughout the days. And I was like, what? It's, you know, God, please tell me what, what it is that you're telling me. Mm. Like, what are you trying to tell me? Mm. And he, all I kept hearing in the back of my mind, Jesus saying, I am more important. I am the only one that fills your joy. Wow. And I literally had like shivers, like thinking like you, like, this is true. Like you are like this whole time I've been mm. identifying myself as an actor. This whole time I've been wanting that validation to be accepted with so many you know like just people in this world and then i didn't realize like jesus literally gave me this moment and was like here you go let me show you how important i am because this is not going to fill you at the end of the day and i'm just like wow that was such a healing and such a beautiful moment and i genuinely just felt like 
I just felt so healed. Like I can let this go. If I, if I, if I chose to like, if, if somebody told me, you know, like, like, I, I feel like I'd be genuinely okay owning a business. I'd be okay just doing my own little projects here and there. I'd be okay, like, you know what I mean? Um, and it was such a beautiful moment in that moment of my identity in Christ. Like, I am a daughter of God. I, like, that's mm. all that is. And I remember I was talking to a friend of mine. Um, he was a driver. His name was Mike. Shout out to Mike. And he, he used to drive me to set. He's this older man. And, you know, he told me he had a near-death experience. And I literally was telling him about my testimony of, like, how I met Jesus. And he then started, like getting into the bible after that he he admitted to me he was just like asia i actually started like reading the bible yeah. again and all that stuff and you know i and i told him like that's so beautiful that let me tell you that moment was the moment i felt more joy than being on set mm. in general wow. and that's that just showed that's a <laughs> lot <laughs> like that to me that's like wow like here like to know that that mike is literally out there like you know with his testimony like just like the the fact that my testimony testimony was able to like for him to feel this this sort of like connection with god and that he's gonna get to know who god is now that he's starting to really read the bible now it's just that that fills me more more joy than like you know than honestly like being on set for like 12 hours or something like that it was it was such a beautiful moment honestly and um yeah i i finally like let that go and i i then really appreciated being in in on set and i then really appreciated just being in the moment and then i invited a few of my girlfriends to come through you know like take advantage of the hotel might as well so i left at that point and then ever since then i came back here and i'm just like wow i i'm okay to you know focus on the pod now focus on you know like my projects again wow and yeah so that's the that's the testimony <laughs> i don't know but god is telling me to tell you mm. you are on set for me every wow. day wow yeah that's so good Oof. yeah wow. i i agree i think oh so man it's so profound because i've always thought like acting acting is is one of the careers in this world that it's uh, i see it from the outside as almost like unnatural you yeah. know like because like you were saying you know there's construction you know you're building things you know highways where people drive on and you know tables that people use for cooking and you know when i think and i'm a musician you know so i, I think mm -hmm. i relate a lot with what you what you were saying about coming to los angeles and having you know the dreams and how many people are here in los angeles because yeah. for a while you know i came from mexico and Millie knows uh, our story where, you know, for a while I was like, oh, I'm going to be, I'm going to be in a band and we're going to do music and, you know, trying to connect to people in Los Angeles. And of course, this was like Spanish networking, you know, with, we opened for a few, you know, big names and stuff like that. Yeah. So you're like, oh, this, this is going to be my shot, yeah. you know? So it's super similar, you know, it's, it's a different industry, but it's, it's related. A you lot know, of rejection. A, a <laughs> lot of rejection. Yes. And, uh. So you you still have this dream, but acting it it seems to me like wow like let's say let's just put you know whom whomever is like the I don't know if the best actor but the the most successful actor mm. it feels like what does that mean yeah. <laughs> what, what what does it mean to be a successful actor you know yeah. to to portray stories yeah that other people resonate with mm -hmm. i mean it's it's cool you know yeah. but w when i look at it it's like wow the core is that i think as humans we are so uh narrative yeah. oriented right like we're creatures of stories and we we believe the stories that we are raised in and uh, we step into stories right so i think that's why you no know, being an actor is such a big deal mm -hmm. because you're telling stories and stories matter right and yeah, the stories the that we tell down. shape yeah. the world so true so so that's what i was like wow acting is just so so interesting but anyways with millie's point that she's saying you know you're on on set for me i was resonating with that too you know because even the the testimony of jonathan rumi with his you know becoming mm. the lead actor for jesus right on wow. this series that was Seriously. that has blown up i'm like wow it's it's almost like god God knows how 
stories are so important for us mm. that he he wants us to live the best role that we will ever live but for for ourselves like for our own story almost to the point of saying we like with jonathan Rumi, is like jonathan like jonathan Rumi to me is more important mm -hmm. than than jesus jonathan mm -hmm. right so in this case i feel like for an actor to realize that that it's what you did you know you realize my identity is not acting no right my identity is christ and and god gave you the chance and the opportunity to be in on set mm -hmm. and still feel discontented and still feel like wow i feel like something's missing but then that glimpse of this this man who you know encountered you and you know, started reading the bible and all of that yeah. and god affirming that and saying you know that's bigger and that's that's what i have for you yeah Right. But I, I don't think God's taking away, you know, the dream per se. Right. And saying, oh, yeah, this dream doesn't matter. Like no. I can use that. Yeah. Right. But it's it's so valuable to know that your identity in Christ is more important because that's really the role he wants you to play so true. in your life. So true. Right. Yeah. No, I completely agree because like all my life, like that's what I, I battled with. You know, like I've literally ended relationships like long long-term relationships because oh they couldn't date an actor and all that stuff and then i even think about it too like in general like if i really wanted a godly marriage at what cost you know as an actor do i you know like at what cost because like biblically like i'm, I'm still trying to figure it out you know at this time and um like I personally can't date an actor just because like it's such a complicated industry, but it's just one of those things where I'm just like, okay, like I can go into the di directorial kind of like area and all that stuff. Cause I just want, I, I do have this passion for stories. Like I do have a passion for like, I would, I, I, I didn't just do this for the fame or else I would have given them like 10 years ago. You know what I mean? Um, but it was just more so like, every time I'm in a theater, every time I, you know, you know, watch a movie, like you could either like escape from your own life or relate to whatever th that story is. And I think that's the beauty, like that's the beauty of storytelling. And, you know, I do have a passion for telling stories and I used to write as a kid a lot, especially like little books here and there, like little tiny wow. short stories on that's Wattpad. Cool. I don't know if you guys heard of Wattpad before. No. Um, it's, um, what is that? It's like, a, it's like YouTube, but for writers. <clears throat> so okay. they, so they just like write a bunch of um, stories and then, you know, you get viewers um, and, you know, sometimes it blows up and it becomes like a best-selling novel. Um, actually, like wow. there's a few movies based off of Wattpad's like wow. stories. That's cool. Yeah, it's so cool. So I ended up, um, I would do that. And then, yeah, I always had a, a big passion. And I'm, I'm actually like in the midst of like script writing uh, a film right now. And it's like, and it's funny, the more I've wanted to write this since I was 15. But now the more I, as I grow older, the more I just want to like, like immerse more uh, immerse god into it you know as i i'm building my relationship with god more and more so i'm just like it's so crazy how like you know it, it's just all in god's timing you know at the end of the day i still don't know what he wants me to do at this point like whether if i just venture you know to other things and or stick to the i i couldn't tell you like i really don't know but i do know at the end of the day that i fully really understood what surrendering to god was mm. in that moment and it was just one of the most beautiful experiences i find like i was always in control of my own life and you know there was only moments like just little moments here and there that i felt like okay god like you take the wheel but this time around i'm at this mentality where i'm like god please like like if it's in your will take it if it's not in your will take it away from me and if it is like let me just walk in your purpose and i'm just I'm following that right now and it's it's a hard, wow. it's a hard walk but it's wow. really So if yeah. Jesus let's say I mean Jesus is here right but let's say Jesus was sitting right here <laughs> and he's like hey I'm I'm thinking about putting investing in a movie investing in a, in a story mm -hmm. and he tells he comes to you and is like can you give me a few stories and see if I can you know if I want to invest in those what type of stories would you bring to him what um, type of I don't know. Yeah. What's, what's your like, passion? Honestly, like 
drama faith-based type of like motivational inspiring like something kind of like you know a little bit of uh, a mix of like pursuit of happiness but you know maybe a little bit more faith-based mm. um yeah something along those lines uh yeah yeah i think what are these move these uh the pad what pads you said yeah what what are the stories well you said as a as a little kid you used to write yeah. stories what are those stories like i'm they curious were, honestly like, they were all like romantic like wow. really sad or comedy rom-coms type of like stories like little short yeah. stories but yeah wattpad is really it's blowing up now they there's a lot of movies that are you know i think the the one with anne hathaway it was based off of like a wattpad movie a Wattpad uh, story. So, and the one that we just filmed, um, which is coming out in November, selective theaters. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously though, no. uh, it's it's based off of Wattpad as well. Um, the the writer, oh, wow. she she blew up from Wattpad. So it's really it's really exciting. And uh, yeah, honestly, Wattpad's a great a great if you really want to like you know if you're a, a writer and you know like yeah it could either become a best-selling novel and you could you know or someone i'm not but it. my kids are yeah they should my they should check it out it. it's so good yeah that's so cool wow well i can't wait to see where god's gonna take you because i think you know you you've been obedient and you've been submitting you know so we can only hope and I, it's not a hope i think it's more like we know because that's how god is you know he moves and mm. Um, once you open the doors to him, he's you know, got, he yeah. opens doors, right? That nobody else can shut. And it's mm -hmm. just like the testimony of Jonathan Rumi and other people, you know, that once yeah. you surrender to God, he's like, Hey, how about this lead role I have crazy. for you right here? Right. It's so crazy. <laughs> so, and we're also excited for you to take this journey of podcasting, you know, Thank so you. today being, uh, welcome to the know, community. Yeah. <laughs> it's so crazy. I feel so like peaceful. You know, like it's it's actually very calm. I'm so excited now, you know, because it's always in the back of my head, like, oh, what what would it be like to talk to, you know, in the podcast, all that stuff. And I already did a couple interviews, but like this type of energy, it's it's really good. I like, think you're so natural. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Well, you guys are so natural, and you guys have <laughs> great energies. And honestly, I'm so excited for your ventures and like this studio. It's honestly, I just. It's renovated now and it's so, so nice. And I'm just really excited for what God has plans for you guys because it's doing a lot it's of work. It's all about timing. It's doing a lot of work you know? right now. You guys have no idea. It's it's definitely, you guys are helping a lot of people out. Thank you. Yes. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. Boom. We're going we're gonna to go to our emojis. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh huh. So this is how I like to wrap up the English episode. That's how we roll. Oh, cool. That's how we roll, baby. That's how we roll, baby. <laughs> okay, so I call this the belief meter All right, I'm gonna explain it to you. I also have one of these emojis on my hat. Uh, check them out at christianpodcast.com, nice. my shop. <laughs> That's awesome. So this is blasphemous emoji. Then next comes a skeptical emoji. Okay. Then inspire emoji in the middle, then holy, and finally divine. So that's why I call it beliefometer or a spectrum of belief. So it goes from the worst to the best. Okay, so you're gonna walk through the five emojis by saying according to you, and maybe even it would be fun to do it kind of like in the in the film industry. Okay, okay. The worst ideas to the best. Right, or you can say you can talk about your testimony, whichever you know. But you know, if okay. if it's the film industry, that's fine. Okay. <laughs> uh, so the first one is blasphemous. So according to Asia Lizardo, what is the most blasphemous idea out there in the film industry, or being an actor even? Blasphemous. That's so. That's such a hard like question. The, like, worst. What, the worst what have you witnessed that's oh. the, the, the worst oh oh well i mean 
honestly, like Hollywood itself is just like you know, like I'm not saying it's the devil, but like there are Hollywood is the devil (laughs) and it's the worst and it's blasphemous. We take it. It's it's scary, (laughs) you know, like the the Me Too people and you know, like the it's yeah. What what's the most blasphemous about the film industry is you know producers and you know like big big names like trying to take advantage of women in the Mm. film industry 100 percent yeah that's horrible yeah yeah like that that nickelodeon guy yeah (laughs) wow okay yeah that sounds horrible yeah we know hollywood has (laughs) has that right lots of blasphemous things yeah moving on to the next one skeptical where do you see skepticism played out or what are you still skeptical of when it comes to maybe the film industry what do i say what's skeptical um (gasps) I mean, <laughs> the music in the background is so yeah. funny. I'm like, damn. <laughs> what's uh, what's what what's skeptical about the music the music industry, the, the film mu- industry, like in general, or how I feel, like how just, you feel, whichever. Just take it uh, whatever you want to take it. Like I, I don't want to sound so like like negative. <laughs> like, well, it okay. gets better. It's so okay. Um, what's skeptical about uh? I think it's. Oh my gosh. Hmm. Okay, can you guys give me an example so like no. I could get <laughs> I just, We're gonna skip that one. Okay. You wanna skip it? Because it is blasphemous in a sense, so yeah. yeah, I guess What makes you doubt? Oh, what makes me doubt about the film industry. Yeah. Um Hmm. I don't know, like things are things are changing now. A lot of things are changing and it's kind of scary. AI. AI mm. definitely is scary because okay, that's you know, a good there's, one, yeah. Yeah, finally I got I was like, okay, yeah. there, there, that's something <laughs> in my head now. Yeah, AI is definitely giving me skeptical vibes just because uh, you know, now what I hear is like they're replacing a lot of like, you know, even background actors at this point. And wow. we're all trying to get our money, you know, we're all trying to work even just for a day. So I think what I heard, I don't know if I can confirm, but I heard that um, AI would take like a uh, background extras like face and they would like kind of use it and uh, just, you know, use it and like multiple like multiply mm. with I don't know. It's weird. But regardless, like we're getting less you know we're we're getting less jobs because of it so, wow yeah because AI, of AI is bad yeah ai is bad ai, AI is, is bad AI skeptical is of ai mm-hmm. makes sense mm-hmm. wow inspire emoji see it gets better okay where Woo. do you see hope <laughs> no what <laughs> what hope? inspires you what's good about that industry um what inspires me is just like being able to tell a story that is very important that actually is like super you know purposeful to you know help and serve others and stuff it's, i'm 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 having hope with the the script that i'm writing right now i'm i'm very excited for that to be honest and i hope it reaches you know a lot to to a lot of like you know viewers and stuff so we'll your see. script yeah yeah the story nice. that i'm okay. uh, like that i'm writing right now or um That's cool. yeah yeah We'll pray for that at the end. Please do. Okay. (laughs) Mele, the next one, invite her into the next one. The next one, that's divine? No. Oh, no, no. Holy. Holy Holy idea. Holy idea. Probably the script, honestly. (laughs) About the film industry. Probably the script. Inspire? Yeah. Yeah, very inspiring. And also just kind of like even the idea of like venturing out maybe doing directing or like you know producing something i don't know like we'll see we'll see where it goes and something like genuinely like that focuses on god we need more we need more like christian based films or like you know just something that really like represents who god is you know and hopefully we reach more people out who are non-christians to be able to kind of like resonate with that film and then get you know how do i say it you then get curious right mm-hmm. so i i hope one day that you know that happens more love yeah. it divine yeah. idea divine idea so a divine idea yes um wow all I keep thinking about is just creating more films. <laughs> like, I don't know, like with the film industry. Um, yeah, 
I think just like maybe just again like creating like that 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 like a, a really good film that like just resonates with God more and that will honestly just reach out to viewers who are not just Christians mm -hmm. but yeah that would be really really amazing and you know we can like move forward from there and then yeah, see where that true. goes who knows yeah. yeah I gotta pray over it talk to my mentors about it yeah it'll be really interesting yeah love it yes mm -hmm. we believe that god is using all these platforms for him yeah you know because the church is coming like this yeah but god, god is using podcasts they're using like so programs true. like the chosen you know so we know more movies are mm. up there like base or religion base and it's been so helpful yeah. just for us for our family to understand yeah. more who is jesus and what is our role in this world <clears throat> and how his kingdom work mm -hmm. so That's it's so good it's fine yes okay Millie, pray for the script the story she's writing just Please pray do. yeah i don't know <laughs> we're in 2024 yeah mm. imagine this story could resonate for the for the rest of this century yeah, yeah we we come to you dear lord thank you god for this space thank you for uh, today, sunny day, hot outside. Thank you for this beautiful air conditioner. God, I just put this project in your hands and do whatever you want with this project. At the end of the day, this is for you. But we have peace and comfort that you are working in her life for her and through her. Thank you for all that crea creativity. Thank you for all the lives are coming to you through that script. God is in your hands. This is your project. And just send angels around her and bless and fulfill all her needs so she can continue with this project. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. Hey, Amen. Thank you. So good. This was awesome. This was great. Okay, I'm going to just put the song I think, to end. I think you just did your part, you know, and God yeah. is calling us to all of us to just surrender. Yeah. Uh, it's such a strong thing to do, Beto. Surrender, so, yeah. Surrender, you know, like. I like surrender. Sounds fun. <laughs> <laughs> surrender. I like it. You know, honey, you that, that's so what funny. you have. <laughs> Yeah. Surrender, my friends. Surrend. Jesus. I like it. Surrender. Surrend. Because Gosh. merch. <laughs> yeah, surrender. That's what I'm talking about. I love it. Yes. No, you're right. You're we, right. we can do this. Okay. Yeah. Aisha Lizardo, thank you so much for you. you know being on the show. Thank, thank you for you, you know that that uh, I just love it. You know that you're stepping into like I don't know. You know, you knocked on the door, Hard. you're here, you're yeah. showing up. And you have a dream and a vision and a passion. And I think we're going to be working together, you know, and we're <laughs> so going to support you I with your it. podcast. Yeah. So be on the Thank lookout you. for Asia Lizardo. Maybe if you want to invite people, maybe to follow you on Instagram. Yeah. If you have an yeah. Instagram. It's at Asia Lizardo, A-S-I-A-L-I-Z-A-R-D-O. And that's it. And there we go. Yeah. Thank you guys. I really appreciate everything that you guys have done. And this is really a divine appointment. Like it just like it's just deeper than just, you know, like the podcast itself it just made it it's very inspiring to just keep to keep me going forward and to you know the projects that i'm doing honestly and, and i know for sure a lot of people is gonna listen to this but and they're gonna be it's gonna be so helpful mm -hmm. for you know probably kids they're studying the same or they're going to the same path yeah yeah that's a good advice yeah and it's so hopeful so hopeful so hopeful mm -hmm. and it's just it yeah honestly i think the biggest take is like don't identify yourself to, you know, like to that big dream that you have in a sense, like really surrender it to God. I think if I if I had a choice to like tell the, like my kids that one day, you know, like give it to God and let him do the work in you and like he will just bless it like 10 times fold. But yeah, like the fact that you don't I like attach yourself to that whatever worldly identity it is and that you just attach yourself to Christ is the most important thing. So beautiful yeah so good okay my friends thank you. thank you for watching thank you for listening maybe if you're on spotify or apple podcast want to remind you to like subscribe share the episode visit us on christianpodcast.com check yeah. out asia lizardo send us your comments questions that you might have we'll see you guys on the next one yeah.
Thank, thank you for thank you for being the light and the salt of this world. Oh. Asia, thank you. You you as well. You as well, guys. Ciao.